Hello everyone, greetings and namaste. My name is Luke Elijah. Thank you very much for watching this video. With me beside is this my super gorgeous guest, right? <laughs> and her name is... Dania Nabia Warrior. Hello! <laughs> Thank you so much Dania for agreeing to come to my talk show. No, seriously, it's a, it's a great honor to be here. Alright, I, I met, first met Dania through a mutual friend of ours, one of my clients who comes to my workshops. And she says, you got to meet Dania. Right? She's not, not only she's a model, She's an actress, a media personality, a dietitian, right? And you just do so many things, a spiritual practitioner, you're a life coach. You know, could you tell the audience a little bit about yourself and your background and how you got into being a transformational life coach when, you, when initially you were actually a, just, a, you know, just another pretty face, but then why is a pretty face doing spirituality? Share with us. Great question, great question. Um, okay, so as, you know, he's done a great job covering like the vast uh, areas that I've been kind of dabbling in, uh, but really my passion is in transformational coaching and spiritual consultancy. And uh, as he said, you know, um, I'd been in all these different industries and I was very, very unhappy. And for most of the time, I was actually very, very sick as well. Um, I'd gotten into a lot of bad habits. Um, I, you know, drug addiction at a very young age, you know, I came from an abusive background. Um, I was also very temperamental. Um, I was an empath child, so I took on a lot of energies and I, you know, became very imbalanced. And so school was a huge, huge struggle for me, you know, like just listening to the teacher, like it, it, was, it was impossible for me. So all throughout school, you know, being really weird, like my friends didn't quite, you know, get me, I was always the odd one out. And um, by the time I was in my 20s, you know, I developed a, a drug problem and um, I had also been struggling with bulimia for 20 years. Uh, I'd seen psychologists, psychiatrists, and they would just keep throwing more medication at me. And uh, at the time, I was a TV presenter and I was doing a, a show interviewing Kobe Kale, I remember. And uh, in that interview, as she was responding to my question, mm. I had absolutely no idea what she was saying to me because I was flatlined on the drugs, you know, the, the drugs don't give you an ability to be able to have, you know, emotional highs or lows, or, so you just flatline, you know, and so I didn't even have the ability to panic, and that's the first time I went, I cannot do medication. Yeah, because those antidepressants that they give you have so many side effects. Absolutely. You totally do, yes. Absolutely. So you end up with, like, your problem and a thousand yes. other problems. <laughs> So, um, yeah, I mean, the shot of it is I had uh, my spiritual awakening mm -hmm. uh, when I was about 27 years old, roughly about seven, eight years ago. And uh, ever since, I've been on the path to just find myself. I studied with different master teachers, shamans, uh, practitioners, you know, masters in their field. And um, I found my way back home, slowly but surely, and I'm medication free. And now I do what I love because I'm just being me. So. Beautiful. I mean, just hearing you say that, wow, I, like, you went through a whole of difficult times, ups and downs, and so much experiences, even, you know, and, and all, within, like, all within before you even hit 30, all this, all this trauma that you carry, bulimia, abusive family, and then, how, like, just looking at how, I, I can't even imagine those things happen to you, I mean, you transcended them very well, um, right, you transmuted all those negatives. Positivity. Now you're teaching people how to improve their lives. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. But I, you know, I also want to very humbly offer that every day it's a process for me. Every day I learn. Every day I have to be a student as much as you know, because whatever it is that I am, you know, offering is yeah. because I have to ingest and experience it first. Yes. You know, so it's a very humbling Correct. journey. Yeah, I mean the fact that you, you you went through those things, so you're able to empathize with other people. Because you know you say, hey, you know I've gone through the, what you're going through, so I can teach you and show you the way how I managed to transmute and transcend those difficulties and those issues and problems. You yeah. Know? So, yeah. You know, only when you've gone through those challenges yourself are you able to then say I can help you. Yeah. I'm able to help you if you want, if you are open to that help. Yeah. Right. But I'm sure you get this a lot. Oh, you're so beautiful. You show me your life is <laughs> more charming and. And you know, what do you say to that? You know, <laughs> you know, your life must be a bed of roses, it's so easy, just look at you, it's so beautiful, you like, you know, it must be, the path is made up for you, you know. Yeah. What do you tell someone when they ask you that, when they tell you that? Again, fantastic mm -hmm. question, fantastic mm -hmm. question, because um, I was a part of this, this pretense for so long. You know, I supported this kind of belief that you could have this perfect life and 
perfect image and you know I, you could be skinny you could be you know and have whatever it is that you wanted to have and yeah. stuff your face and you know act like a clown outside and like stay up till crazy hours and still be functioning like normal like no you know th th there's so much pretense behind that and this double life that I was living and that caused a lot of um, in fact I would say it aggravated my mental disorder so at 27 I was diagnosed with bipolar and um, I think it had so much to do with this living in pretense yeah. and, uh, and the I fantasy think, media world versus the real world absolutely mm -hmm. absolutely and this is why I think it's important mm -hmm. for someone like me who is in the media who is still you know it's not like oh I, I don't want to be pretty like come on no I, I know that I love looking beautiful you know but I have a different relationship with beauty now you know it's not like uh, what I assumed was coming out of you know the magazines or this picture perfect kind of beauty but rather this really who am I and how are those like nuances and those intricacies really just beautiful and raw and enticing and from that I can really stand in my power and say yeah I'm hot because <laughs> I think this is a great, <laughs> great thing you highlighted you know you can be exteriorly very and superficially on the, on the outside very beautiful but you don't feel it inside it's not going to matter Really, and it, the converse can be true too. You may not be the best looker, but if you embody it from within, yeah. wow, yeah. powerful, you know? Yeah, and there's mm. always this perception mm. as well that, in fact, you highlighted it when we had a chat before, um, that when somebody sees, you know, somebody who's really attractive, they think, oh, their life is so easy and, you know, everything just works out for them. You know, everybody's got problems. Everybody's got problems, and I know a lot of attractive people don't actually feel that people connect with them for who they are. You know, there's yeah. this like facade about why. So there's never this belief that I'm really loved for who I am. You know, so that that's a very, you know, it's like a shell that's just waiting to break. And um, so yeah, I want to offer that too. It's it's really relative. This idea of beauty and what people struggle with. Everybody struggles with something. Right. Actually, you know, as a photographer in my past, working in, in the fashion media industry for over 20 years, and meeting so many celebrities and models, I can definitely agree with that. I mean, sometimes, you know, when, when the more beautiful that person is, right, the more insecure they are. And there's iron, this irony of it. Actually, they, they already have what it takes not to be insecure, but yet they're even more insecure than the average person because they feel this pressure, immense pressure to upkeep. Right? And, and put a, a, that larger than life facade and that sometimes is very trying and uh, the intensity of the amount of peer pressure to, to continue to constantly project that, that false illusionary image. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> totally, right? <laughs> so, you know, tell the audience some of the upcoming assignments, projects and workshops that you have. Okay, so... What I primarily do is I work one-on-one -on -one and I love that mm -hmm. uh, because I get to go really deep really fast. So I do a lot of private uh, sessions with clients, uh, but I've recently also moved into workshops and I love working with women in particular uh, because it's really close to my heart. Yeah, women have a lot of body weight issues, you know, body oh, image, yeah. insecurity, self-esteem yeah. issues. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. and they're beautiful. They're beautiful. You know, I joke about this all the time. If you see like a beautiful oak tree that's like this giant, you know, oak tree that's just standing there, you'd be like, wow, you know, blown away by its magnificence. But you would never go up to that oak tree and say, oh, honey, you should lose a couple of pounds. <laughs> You know, it's like insane. Yeah. It's insane. We never think that, yeah. you know, because nature is so varied and it's beautiful if it's just being itself. Mm -hmm. And so I think even for, for people, it's about getting to know what is your nature? What is your natural body type? Yes. And the more you can embrace and train uh, that, uh, that's beauty. That's beautiful. Yeah. So um, that's the, you know, workshop parts as well. Um, and I've also done client retainers recently and that's been very exciting for me. So I work with uh, one client but an extended period so I live their life with them. Mm. So I go in and stay with them and we work on issues real time like and that's really fascinating for me. Mm. Because you know you can't run away from it, the problems are coming and you have to deal with them. 
Mm -hmm. uh, so it's high intensity and it's usually high performance clients and uh, I really love that too. Mm -hmm. uh, and I've also started working with uh, companies in restructuring the company but again it's not like I do business strategy or anything like that. I really work with the emotional aspect of the company because even the company is a living being, it's a living entity. Yeah. It has a heart, it has the legs, the runners, the people who hold the vision. So it's like a body that's functioning and you got to sometimes, you know, work with companies that have a broken heart, you know, and, uh, and that's what I go in there to try and fix. Um, so yeah, I think that's in a, a nutshell <laughs> what it is that I do. Um, and I'm really excited, like I'm specifying uh, with the women's workshops. I really, really am getting into diet, body image, weight issues, beauty. Mm. You're all related. Oh, mm. super big. Yeah. Super big because we just mm. we have this idea about what food is and our relationship to food and our relationship to dieting, and women have a whole thing going on with their relationship with food. It's an emotional relationship. It's a real relationship for them. Yes. You know, like a person, like they're dating their food. And you were not. <laughs> you, had, you went through bulimia and depression and all this, and then you, and you really are the right person because you know you're such a good sports person as a media person, as a model, as actress who has gone through all those issues herself, and you know, so definitely the right person to go to. You know, people, we, women will relate to you for that. I can't see women relating me to me. For that. <laughs> you know, I'm always, I, I never had to struggle with bulimia. I am always. You know, in fact, I'm always on the skinny. I wish I could put away. I could never put away. This is interesting. The first issue. This is interesting. So, do you, do you, but do you have like this kind of uh, any sort of relationship? So it doesn't have to be. Well, for me, I, I don't really enjoy eating. I kind of wish I could just, you know, if all my nutrients <laughs> can be in one capsule and just swallow it, and then, you know, I'll be happy. I'm not, ah. really, I'm not a big foodie. So I know most women love food. Well, I'm the reverse. I don't like to eat. And I just eat to live. I don't eat, I don't eat because I enjoy it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so, okay. <laughs> see, that, that is so good. That is so good because a lot of people, I think, also think uh, when it comes to food, it's about like, oh, you must have an eating disorder. Like, yeah. you have a problem, you must either be bulimic or anorexic, anorexic or uh -huh. overeating. But that's really not the case. Even people who, you know, don't, don't have any interest in eating or mm. they deprive themselves or uh, sometimes it's not even something drastic like mm. that, you know. It's, I have not yet met a single woman in my life who has not at some point in her life mm -hmm. struggled with some sort of um, diet or food issue. That's a good point actually. So that's a, good point. That's a yeah. big deal. That's a yeah. big you, you are right, even if I think of people who are fit and, and sexy and have the ideal body image, they're always counting calories, there's always something. something. There's always something. Yeah. yeah, yeah, totally. You know, could you also share with us, you know, you recently you did, uh, talking about deprivation, you did a really hardcore meditation uh, retreat. You actually did a dark room retreat, right, for several days. All right, could you tell us the experience and what made you, you know, attempt something like this? You know, what were you thinking? And how, how do you positively benefit from it? So, mm -hmm. um, the dark room process is mm -hmm. one that I've heard of uh, for many years mm -hmm. and I never really felt the calling up until now. And so the timing was right for you? The timing was perfect because I had actually been working with, uh, for a month before I was in Malta, mm -hmm. and I had the privilege of working with some extraordinary shamans, and one particular shaman, uh, Dr. Fabio Rettig, he is known as the Frog Prophet, and he works with a medicine called Sapito, uh, and it's basically a toad uh, secretion, that, and it's 5-MeO-DMT. Uh, it's the same thing that is uh, emitted by yes. your pineal gland. That and that's a trick to me. Yes. Yeah, mm -hmm. So it takes it takes you into the dream state. And, yes. Um, so I was working with that that medicine along mm -hmm. with other medicines, and it just opened me, you know, just wide open. And I felt like so much of me was just like here, yeah. out, wow. and light, and universe, and, and dimensions, and yeah, Ooh, you know. Wow. And so when I came back, I I just needed this kind of like an enclosed okay. space. I needed to get back and ground mm -hmm. these experiences back in my body. Because I think a lot of us, you know, we have all these experiences and we don't allow ourselves integration time, really, because it's crucial. You need to, as much movement as you have, you need to balance that out with rest. Mm. And uh, so that, that was the primary motivation behind doing the dark room. But it turns out it was just as intense <laughs> in a different way. You know, it's the, it, it, it's the dark inner journey um, and I got to see again different 
facets of myself and the darkroom process is, for those of you who don't know, a darkroom process is where you're sitting in a, literally a dark room with no light at all, nothing. You have no concept of time, uh, you're just pretty much in there with yourself and you are in a meditative state and you try to commune with that which is your core. And um, so it, it, it gets pretty intense, you have to st you, you start listening to all the thoughts that you have and how your body works and you know, it's it's crazy. I I I can't even put it into words, but it's Yeah, it's ineffable, I'm sure. <laughs> it's also personal. Everyone who goes through it will have something different to say. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you get your personal yeah. messages from your divine, yeah. whatever that looks like for you. you know? So it's one is very opening and this the dark room is very inward, yeah. very cl closing up yes. by itself. It's mm -hmm. the paradox of the universe, I guess, even when you're Going out, you're going in. It's going in. When yes. you're going in, you're also going, going out. out. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But I guess it's different complementary uh, ways of accessing yourself. Okay, so you know when you're doing something like this, how do you get fed? How do you use the bathroom? <laughs> Such good practical questions. Yes, they were really difficult to maneuver. I have to say, my mom, uh, you know, she, bless her heart, she like, you know decided to take care of me during this period so they would actually clean the bathroom and like even that was all strapped with like dark paper and so my mom had to come in at certain intervals and like she'd prepare like a small food because you're not doing any physical activity mm -hmm. really you don't need much food yeah. so very basic plain foods um, and she would just send them in at certain points and uh, but everything was was really intense the slightest bit of sound you hear or you know and when you if they're late for example it feels like 10 hours have passed you know, so you go through a lot of emotional stuff. Uh, but on the practical side, you know, I knew I was going to die three days. If I miss a meal or two, it's fine. Yeah, no <laughs> Facebook, no Instagram. It's like a purging, right? Detoxing all that you don't need, really. Yeah, mm. and you don't realize how much light, artificial light, uh, gets pumped into our system yeah. that actually messes up our biorhythms. Mm -hmm. You know, artificial light, like we used to rely on the moon. Mm. Even for women, you know, syncing our period cycles, mm -hmm. we used to follow the moon and now with this artificial light, it's really messed up our hormonal system and our cues basically. Um, so it was really eye-opening to be able to, you know. Would you recommend this to people or do they have to be a calling and they'll be really ready? Um, I think in general, I really, I'm a great advocate for any sort of plant medicines and yeah. any sort of process that gets you to connect deeply to yourself. Um, so I would advise it for anybody, but the, the thing is like it's not the process, it's that process for that person. You know, it's like you don't have a food that you recommend for somebody. It's like what is the best food for you? So I would encourage people to really go out there and try things, try modalities, try different medicines, try different shamans. Uh, and see what really fits mm. on them. Mm -hmm. you know? Well said, well said. Yeah. Right, thank you so much for pouring out your heart and sharing with us. Where can the audience go to to find out more about you, to read out about you, and to sign up for your courses, or to hire you for sessions? Okay, um, you can find me at my website, which is www.mydivinelife.me. <laughs> and uh, you can also find me on Facebook. You can follow me on Facebook, and I have an Instagram account, which is also mydivinelife.me. Um, I like that my divine life, such a beautiful title. Yes, yeah. and I love that when people say my divine life too, it refers to them. Exactly. So yeah, so I'll be placing all these links below in the video description. Feel free to click on it to find out more. Right. Thank you so much okay. for coming on to our talk show, my talk show, and. Uh, <laughs> You know, I definitely will have you come back again to speak on a different topic. You know, you're a very fascinating person and you know, you're beautiful both on the inside and outside and shows and you know, so many people can benefit just by, you know, being close to you and you reaching out to them and you know, you're going to bless so many lives and teach and through your, you know, outreach projects and because you're a media personality, you actually reach a bigger catchment area bigger audience than most average practitioners would. So that's really your divine purpose. And that's the divine plan. Yeah, yeah. So thank you guys for watching this video. Please feel free to subscribe to my YouTube channel for more similar videos. Namaste. <laughs>